Hey everybody, welcome to episode four, part two of my Etsy print on demand beginner series. Episode four was all about the appearance of your shop and part one was about the appearance of your shop homepage, including your shop's banner and shop icon. Part two is gonna be all about product mockups and how you can stand out from the competition and look like a professional Etsy print on demand seller. We're gonna do some comparisons of real shops and how they're using better mockups to stand out. Then we're also gonna go through a free method and a paid method for getting better product mockups. So stick around, I think you're gonna find this video helpful. Let's get started. Okay, before we dive in, I just want to mention if you did miss part one and you want to go back and see the information about creating your shop banner and your shop icon for your homepage, go to the link in the description to check out the video for part one. The first thing that we are going to do today for part two is do a comparison of some real uh, mock-ups that we see in a couple shops. We're going to use the same two shops we used yesterday to compare the overall shop appearance, but this time we're going to look at their mock-ups. Then we are going to talk about how to create some uh, high-quality mock-ups. So let's start with this shop, and I want you to take a look at the mock-ups on the screen and start seeing kind of what do you see, what do you notice about these mock-ups. Um, first, I want to call your attention to the navy blue tank top. I don't know about you right now watching this video, but for me, I'm not that far away from my computer screen, and I'm having a hard time reading the text that's in that mock-up. And there's some type of a red graphic in the center that I can't even tell what that graphic is right now. So the takeaway here is these are not zoomed in far enough. Almost all of the mock-ups on this screen are left at the default setting and they did not zoom in or adjust the mock-up so that the text is bigger. And the result of that is if a prospective customer cannot read the text in your design on the search results page, they're gonna look right past it and you will not be making a sale because you have plenty of competitors that did make a probably similar design but zoomed in far enough that the customer could actually see it when they were looking at search results. So number one thing to avoid is do not leave your mock-ups at the default zoom setting uh, is if they're zoomed out far enough that you can't read the text. So definitely avoid that. And we're going to show you at the end, after we create some mock-ups, how to make that adjustment. Uh, thing to avoid number two would be what you see in this baseball mom t-shirt up at the top. Unfortunately, there's no background. And when there's no background, if it's transparent or white like this, two things happen. Number one, if the shirt is white, it's white on white. There's no contrast and it doesn't stand out. Notice that even if you go back to that navy blue tank top, even though I can't read the text, there's good contrast here. I can clearly see the garment kind of pops out a little bit. Up here, zero contrast with the white shirt and the white background. The other negative thing about this, of course, the design isn't very big. It's not zoomed in again. But also when you see a person, like an actual person like this on a transparent or a white background, it just kind of lets you know that it's fake. It's a mock-up. It's not a real person wearing the actual shirt. Um, well, obviously this was a real person when the picture was taken, but you know what I mean. It's it's not a photo of a person wearing your shirt. It's a, it's a mock-up photo of a model that your design was added to, and, and people can tell that. It doesn't look quite as professional um, without having some type of a background there. So two things that uh, I think could be improved about these mock-ups. Now let's switch over to the shop that we looked at yesterday, who was doing an excellent job with their shop banner and the overall design theme with the shop icon and the consistency of their homepage. They're also doing an excellent job with their mock-ups. Take a look at what you see here. You see basically the opposite. You see all of the mock-ups are consistent. Now you don't have to have every single one of your listings have the same primary thumbnail, the same mock-up. But I have to say it does look pretty nice, the consistency here. Um, every single one of these is zoomed in far enough for me to read the text without having to lean in or squint or anything like that. They are all professional looking. None of them are on a transparent background. They all have some context, some accessories around them. I mean, just take a look at this example of a leopard print mama graphic on this t-shirt. Great contrast with the color of the t-shirt that they chose in the background. The design is big and bold. So, you know, if I had searched for leopard print mom shirt, because I know a mom that loves leopard print, I'd have a hard time looking past this and not clicking on it in the search results if it was on page one, because it, it the mock-up just looks very professional. The, the design, like I said, is big and bold. And this overall is just a much more competitive, more professional looking approach 
to product mockups. So this is our goal. We want our mockups to look more like this. I'm not saying this specific shop has absolutely nailed mockups and this is the thing you want to do every single time, but hey, they do have 79,000 sales, so I think they probably know what they're doing with their mockups. Okay, now let's talk about how to actually make some of these more professional looking mockups. Okay, now we're gonna talk about two free methods and two paid methods for creating better product mockups. This first method is 100% free. However, it doesn't yield the absolute best, most professional results, but it is a viable method for improving upon the standard default mockups that you get from Printify or Printful. So we are on the product preview uh, page for a Bella Canvas t-shirt. I have the sample design uploaded onto it, a, onto a black t-shirt here. And this is the way that this would come through when I push this listing to my Etsy shop. It's just going to be the different colors that I offer on a plain white or transparent background, which I do not want. So we're going to use this preview view and just right click and save this image. And it's going to save as a JPEG. So I'm just saving that in my downloads folder. And then what we're going to do is we are going to use uh, two free web-based uh, tools to add a background to this. So there's no need to have Photoshop. If you have Photoshop, you can probably do this quicker with Photoshop. If you don't have Photoshop and you still want to do this, that's I'm going to show you the free way to do it. So we're going to go to a website, a web-based tool called PhotoP that is sort of billed as being a Photoshop alternative. It has a lot of the same functionality of Photoshop, but in a free web-based platform. And we are going to open the file that we just downloaded. All right, got that open. Now we are going to go to our site where we're going to get a background. So Pexels is a graphics or actually it's mostly photos uh, search search engine, which gives you results that are all free for commercial use. So we don't have to worry about uh, licensing or anything like that. Now I'm going to use a wood background, so I'm just going to search for the term wood and see what I get. Now remember, my primary thumbnail that I'm working with is going to be a black t-shirt, so I don't want a dark colored background. I want a light colored background that the shirt will stand out against. So oop, there was one. I think that's good. Yeah, let's use this one here. All right, so we'll select it. We'll go to free download. Just make sure you get a size that's going to be good. I want my final size to be pretty much exactly the size of the default mockup. So I'm just going to I'm going to get one that's a little bigger, I think, than necessary because I can size it down. We'll do just the original size. OK, now we have our background and back in photo P, I'm going to go to file, open and place. And we are going to select that wood image we just downloaded. And you'll see it's going to drop it on top. What I'm going to do first is resize this so that uh, it fills up my whole image. All right, now we can hit our check mark here, save that transformation. And now we're just going to dr drag this layer behind our product. Okay, so now we need to select the white area of this layer and delete it so that we can see the wood background. So go to your magic wand tool over here on your tools menu and then select, just click into the white area and then simply use your control X to delete that white area. So now all I'm gonna do is go up to file and export as a PNG file. You can do it as a JPEG or a PNG. Actually, you know what? Let's do it as a JPEG because JPEGs load a little bit quicker so we're going to do quality 100%. We do want it to be good quality, but we're doing it as a JPEG because it's not a print file. It's just a mock-up, and we'll do save. And it gives us this download file. And now there we go. We have a finished, improved mock-up on a background that is not just a plain white background. However, there is another route to go that I think gives you a more professional-looking mock-up. So let's talk about that now. Okay, your free option number two for improving your mockups also happens to be one of the paid options, and that is Placeit, a service that offers you the ability to create mockups in realistic context situations. They offer mockups as well as many other assets, including the logo creator and the banner creator that we talked about last time on part one. 
uh, but they have just thousands of different mock-ups for different product types and, and tons for t-shirts, which is what we're going to look at today. However, you don't have to pay for the service to use it at all. You do have to create an account, but there is a free account that you can use. And if you go to the t-shirt mock-up section using the menu, you just have to make sure that you are looking at only the free option. So over here on the left, uh, on the left menu, just make sure that you have the drop down selected for free and you will only be looking at the free mockups. Now you're going to see a lot of product types even within the t-shirts that may not be relevant for the specific listing you're creating. So for example, we're doing a Bella Canvas unisex t-shirt. So I do not want to use any mockups that are clearly a woman's cut shirt because that is not going to match the product that I'm selling. Uh, I also don't want to do any of these ones that are clearly crop tops because that's, again, does not match the product I'm selling. So make sure that whatever mock-up you choose here, I'm, I mean, it should go without saying, but just make sure that whatever mock-up you choose, it matches the look of your actual product. Otherwise, you'll probably get some messages from customers telling you that what they receive doesn't match the pictures uh, from your store. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of baby pictures in here and stuff. So we're going to use this side menu to select. I'm just going to go to man. <laughs> we're going to find a men's mock-up that's free here. Um, you know what? Let's use this one with kind of weird lighting. This one will stand out a little bit. The lighting color of the lighting in it's a little bit odd, but uh, I, I think this one will work. So we're going to wait for it to load. We're going to select our shirt color. Remember, we're primary. Our primary mock-up is going to be black. Uh, ordinarily, I would recommend that you don't use the all black, the full all zero hex code color for black in mockups because nothing in real life is the true, true all black. It always has a little bit of fade, especially after you wash them and you want your mockup to be kind of true to life looking. So I usually recommend that you use the color picker and just kind of back off that all the true black just a little bit. Don't make it look gray but just kind of back it off a tiny bit. In this case, however, for this particular mock-up, the lighting is kind of making this black look a little bit more like a dull black, so I'm gonna leave it. All right, so we're gonna select our transparent PNG file, and this is the crop and resize pop-up you get on place it. So we're just gonna take a guess and then we'll make adjustments. Okay, so this is what it looks like at our first attempt. We're going to go back to Printify and just make some kind of mental notes about the design size and placement because, it, remember, we want this to be as true to life as possible. You don't want a mock-up that is just totally different than the, the product your customer is going to receive. So now let's come back to place it and make some adjustments. We'll go to resize. I'm going to make this a little smaller and bring it down a little bit. And we'll try that. All right, I think that looks much better. Okay, so that looks good to me. Let's hit the download button and it'll do some thinking. It will load up here in the top right. And then as soon as the download link appears, we will download it and we are done. So those are the two free options. Okay, paid option number one, we're gonna stay on place here for a moment and just mention that you have a much broader variety of mockups available if you do have a paid account. How much does it cost? Well, let's take a look. Place its pricing is $14.95 a month if you want to pay monthly, but they do offer a discount if you go for the annual subscription. Right now, it just so happens to actually be 50% off the monthly price, so the $89 price you see on the screen is uh, equal to $7.47 a month. It's not always this big of a discount. They always, though, offer a bit of a discount for the annual price. If you know that you're going to be using this in the long term, especially if it happens to be 50% off at the moment, that $90 or $7 a month is definitely a good value in my opinion. Okay, so let's do a quick mock-up here using one of the not free options. As you can see, there are thousands of results. I'm just gonna select man again here. All right, here is an interesting mock-up on a different man that we will use for our sample. Um, of course, they have plenty that ha that feature women, plenty that feature kids. If you offer kid sizing and different cuts of t-shirts, I'm just keeping it simple for the tutorial. Just picking another men's mock-up here. We'll do the same upload process. All right, so as you can see, we get a similar result. This one doesn't kind of have the funny lighting that that other one had, but this is a very similar result, and we'll download this one. 
to consider for our primary thumbnail mock-up. All right, paid option number two is actually to go right back to Etsy itself because there are lots of Etsy sellers out there now that are selling digital download files. And some of them have noticed that we Etsy sellers that sell uh, products, especially print on demand, are looking for product mockups. So if you search for the product type that you're selling, I search for Bella Canvas 3001 mockup, and I have all of these search results. These are digital downloads, which allow me to use a program like Photoshop or Photopea to overlay my uh, transparent PNG file of my design on these mockups and use them over and over again. There are a few different options out there. A lot of these may look familiar to those shops we were doing comparisons to earlier, especially ones like this. These probably look similar to some of the ones that you saw earlier when we were doing some comparisons. That is because a lot of sellers have started downloading these files from Etsy because of how trendy they look. And some are a good value and some are not. Notice that this one happens to be 18 mockups that you get for $4.80. So that one's not a bad value. Um, there are some bigger packs out there for discounted prices. For example, here is a mega bundle. I don't know if that one is uh, the best quality or not, but you get a thousand mockups for $13. Um, here's one that's 400 for $9. But this is definitely a viable option for creating better mockups for your shop as well. And it's becoming more and more popular. Okay, here we are on our listing editor screen in our Etsy shop for the t-shirt that we created. We have the three mockups uploaded that we created today. And we also have the two defaults that came from Printify because I selected both the black and the white colors. While we're talking about colors, let me just mention something that I haven't mentioned yet up to this point. I don't recommend that you offer more than say three to four, maybe five at the most color options for your t-shirt. What I do recommend you do is when you're on the editing side on Printify or Printful, you can view your design on as many colors as you want, but then narrow it down to the, the three or four that you think look the best for that design. Black, of course, is the top selling garment color for t-shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts. Uh, for any design, as long as it doesn't feature black text or black graphics in the design. Uh, but your design can look very nice on some other colors, and that's fine. However, customers will get decision fatigue and not know what choice to make if you offer 10 or 12 or more colors, and that just complicates your mock-ups, and you'll have to create a grid and make them small so they all fit, and it's just not worth it. So I recommend you make it easier for yourself and for the customer and just keep it to three to four and five absolute maximum in terms of color options. So if you had four here, that means you only have to upload six photos. One of those is going to be a size chart. I recommend you create your own size chart. You can do that very easily with Microsoft Word or uh, another a word processing program if you don't have Microsoft Word save the uh, table that you create with the measurements as a PDF, and then use a, a screenshot tool, which most uh, software platforms have one built in. Microsoft does, I believe Apple does as well, to say, take a screenshot of the size chart table you created and then upload that rather than using the default ones that come from Printify or Printful. It just looks more professional if you make a nice one yourself. All right, so that's out of the way. Let's adjust our thumbnail image here using this adjust thumbnail button that's down below. So our primary one is the last one we created. We're going to click on adjust thumbnail. We're going to zoom in. I'm actually going to take this in as far as it goes and then just drag, grab and drag to center it and hit save. And it is as simple as that. You'll see it update in just a second. Now the design, instead of being far away and hard to read, is big, bold, close up, easy to read. I can still see the outline of the t-shirt. This is exactly what we wanted. Okay, that does it for episode four, part two. Hopefully this helped you create better product mockups for your print-on-demand Etsy listings. If you liked this video, give me a comment and let me know. Give me a like on the video to help the YouTube algorithm. And also subscribe to the POD Insights channel if you want to see more videos like this, as well as some additional content that I'll be putting out there around print-on-demand. Thanks, everybody. See you next time.